Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Welcome to St. Mary's Cathedral in Glasgow. My name is Kelvin Holdsworth and I'm the provost here. Today we hear about Jesus saying to people, come away to a deserted place and rest a while. Well, St. Mary's isn't exactly a deserted place. We've been at the heart of the city even when the streets were quieter than they are now. But this is a place where people can come and rest and enjoy being with God, no matter how busy their lives are. Let us gather in peace and enjoy and meet the one who invites us to come and rest. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. God is love and we are God's children. There is no room for fear in love. We love because God loved us first. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith. God, our Father, we confess to you and to our fellow members in the body of Christ that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and in what we have failed to do. We are truly sorry. Forgive us our sins and deliver us from the power of evil. For the sake of your Son who died for us, Jesus Christ, our Lord. God, who is both power and love, forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by the Holy Spirit, and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Compassionate God, from far and near you gather your church into one. Safeguard the unity of your flock through the teaching of Christ the Shepherd, that all your scattered children may find in him the guidance and nourishment they seek. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God for ever and ever. Amen. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to Christ our Savior. 
the apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. He said to them, Come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in the boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them, and they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. As he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. When they had crossed over, they came to land at Gennesaret and moored the boat. When they had got out of the boat, people at once recognized him and rushed about that whole region and began to bring the sick on mats wherever they heard he was. And wherever he went, into villages or cities or farms, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak. And all who touched it were healed. Give thanks to the Lord for his glorious gospel. Praise to Christ our Lord. One might wonder if today's gospel is an instance of do as I say, not as I do. For as much as Jesus seems to value rest, in the passages we've read, he doesn't take it. Jesus planned an escape to a deserted place, but that place turned out to be not so deserted, and Jesus found himself at work. Genesaret wasn't any kind of getaway either. Wherever Jesus went into villages or cities or farms, People begged that they might meet him, and Jesus did. While many preachers will talk this day about rest and recovery, the truth is that the glimpses we get in this reading don't bear out that custom. Work takes precedence for Jesus. A modern-day life coach might have some things to say about Jesus' work-life balance. In these accounts, Jesus didn't stick to the boundaries set. And, hey, you know what? The Gospels record many other instances of this too, from hanging out with the wrong kinds of people, to not following rules about ritual cleanliness, to working on the Sabbath. Sometimes the things Jesus is supposed to do to live a well-ordered and balanced life aren't the things he does. So, what's this all about? Recently, I read an article features writer Brian Lufkin wrote for the BBC. He highlighted a report from two researchers, one in France and the other in the UK. Their 2020 study looked at two groups of employees in middle or senior management roles. One faction avoided working long hours. The other didn't. The researchers identified a common trait among those who rejected long hours, reflexivity. One of the researchers described the steps toward identifying and implementing ways of working and living as taking mental space to gain clarity. Researchers cited in the BBC article talked about flexible habits. Rather than seeking homeostasis, those looking to have healthy working practices accommodate the shifting ground of real life. Things change. Our feelings change. And what we find enjoyable changes too. Simply setting up boundaries that don't adjust to our viewpoints and experiences does not bring harmony. But is this a slippery slope? There will always be something to divert our attention, some angle to pursue, more work to be done. If we're constantly moving the goalposts of our leisure time, will we ever find rest? There's so much broken and hurting in our world with all kinds of people demanding our attention and time. If we never say no, perhaps we'll wind up with nothing left to give. As I read it, these behavioral scientists are not urging folk to live a life without boundaries. And I don't think it's what Jesus is demonstrating either. Instead, we're talking about being present, awake to what's happening 
and how we're feeling. It's the kind of life in which we identify what needs doing, what needs adjusting, and what needs leaving alone. Many of us, myself included, schedule downtime only to find it isn't that refreshing or restorative. On paper, it, it's supposed to work, but we show up for our leisure period and, and our minds are somewhere else. We hope that scheduling the time and then taking it will balance things out, but it doesn't. That's because balance isn't an aim to achieve. It isn't a target we hit and then we're done. If you can, try this. Close your eyes and stand on one foot. I never stop being surprised at how difficult this is. Once you find your, your equilibrium, you may be fine for a bit, but stay there. Eventually, you'll start to feel a wobble, and you'll have to adjust using minor movements to maintain stability. And after a while, you'll need even greater muscle involvement. Maybe you'll have to use your arms. Then, discover how much easier this whole enterprise is if you open your eyes. That's how it is with balance in human beings. It's only as good as the instant you've set it. And it's better when you can see. It seems the way of living a balanced life is responsive and adaptive. As we seek our center, we must pay attention and recalibrate along the way. If rest is important, and indeed it should be, we must pursue it, but not as some ambition or formula. Instead, we must remain alert and attentive to what's going on around us and find our rest over and over again. Let us pray. Let us pray for the coming of God's kingdom, saying, O Lord, your kingdom come. O Lord, your kingdom come. Eternal God, we pray for all the peoples of the world, that they may know you as the God of peace. We pray to you. O Lord, your kingdom come. For the communities in which we live, for those affected by domestic violence, and those involved in human trafficking, that you watch over their going out and their coming in, we pray to you. O Lord, your kingdom come. For nations, for leaders and governments, that integrity may mark all their dealings, we pray to you. O Lord, your kingdom come. For all who labor for righteousness, that your presence and help may give them courage, we pray to you. O Lord, your kingdom come. For communities torn by dissension and strife, that your forgiveness may bring them healing, we pray to you. O Lord, your kingdom come. For the anxious, the lonely, the bereaved, and for those who are ill, especially kneel, that consolation and peace may be theirs, we pray to you. O Lord, your kingdom come. For the church, your household and family, for the Anglican Church of Rwanda, for the Drum Chapel Ecumenical Partnership, and All Saints Jordan Hill, for all who volunteer at St. Mary's, that God's people may be firm in the confession of their hope, we pray to you. O Lord, your kingdom come for Kevin, our bishop, and for all who bear Christ's name, that their lives may proclaim your glory, we pray to you. O Lord, your kingdom come. For those who are separated from us by death, for Florence Canning and Clifford Heskin, 
whose year's mind falls at this time, that theirs may be the kingdom which is unshakable. We pray to you, O Lord, your kingdom come. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus saw the crowd and welcomed them and taught them many things. One of the things that those who draw close to him learn is to be generous. As God is generous to us, so we learn to be generous in return. If you would like to join those of us who make an offering to support the work of this place, you can find the details of how to do so on the cathedral.org.uk. And thank you for your offering. Let us present our offerings to the Lord. Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendor, and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own we give you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. Worship and praise belong to you, Father, in every place and at all times. All power is yours. You created the heavens and established the earth. You sustain in being all that is. In Christ your Son, our life and yours are brought together in a wonderful exchange. He made his home among us that we might forever dwell in you. Through your Holy Spirit, you call us to new birth in a creation restored by love. As children of your redeeming purpose, we offer you our praise with angels and archangels and the whole company of heaven, singing the hymn of your unending glory. Glory and thanksgiving be to you, most loving Father, for the gift of your Son born in human flesh. He is the Word existing beyond time, both source and final purpose, bringing to wholeness all that is made. Obedient to your will, he died upon the cross. By your power you raised him from the dead. He broke the bonds of evil and set your people free to be his body in the world. On the night when he was given up to death, knowing that his hour had come, having loved his own, he loved them to the end. At supper with his disciples, he took bread and offered you thanks. He broke the bread and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, it is broken for you. After supper he took the cup. He offered you thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, this is my blood of the new covenant. It is poured out for you and for all that sins may be forgiven. Do this in remembrance of me. We now obey your Son's command. We recall his blessed passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and we look for the coming of his kingdom. Made one with him, we offer you these gifts, and with them ourselves, a single, holy, living sacrifice. Hear us, most merciful Father, and send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon this bread and this wine, that overshadowed by the Spirit's life-giving power, they may be the body and blood of your Son, and we may be kindled with the fire of your love, and renewed for the service of your kingdom. Help us, who are baptized into the fellowship of Christ's body, to live and work to your praise and glory. May we grow together in unity and love, until at last in your new creation we enter into our heritage, in the company of the Virgin Mary, the apostles and prophets, and of all God's children living and departed. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, with whom and in whom 
in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be to you, Lord of all ages, world without end. Amen. The living bread is broken for the life of the world. Lord, unite us in this sign. As our Savior has taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Do not bring us to the time of trial, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. God is with us wherever we are. As we gaze in adoration, we feed on God in our hearts and minds, that we may in turn feed the world. O God, even as this broken bread was scattered over the hills and was gathered together and became one, so let your church be gathered together from the ends of the earth into your kingdom. For yours is the glory and the power through Jesus Christ forever. Amen. O God, as we are strengthened in these holy mysteries, may our lives be a continual offering, holy and acceptable in your sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. It's been good to gather today with one another and with those who first gathered with Jesus for rest and renewal. My prayer today is that the deep peace of God will go with you every day this week and bless all those whom you encounter. So the peace of God which passes all understanding Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always.
Amen.